Success at an early age, growing up in the spotlight, controversies, a career low, and the return to the top. What might sound like the life story of every child actor ever is the career of Laura Gutberami in a nutshell. Winning her first World Cup race at the age of 17 and 29 more since then, the Swiss athlete has had a strong career so far. At the same time, her personality and statements also led to some harsh critics over the year. But let's start from the beginning. Welcome everybody to a new video here on Alpine Stargate. As you might have guessed, we will be talking about Laura Gut Barami today. She's definitely one of the more controversial athletes in the World Cup. So make sure to let us know what your thoughts on her are in the comments below. Laura Gut grew up in Comano, a small village in the Italian speaking part of Switzerland, with her parents Gabriella and Paoli and her brother Jan. Her family always played an important role in Gut's life, with her brother being a fellow ski racer, her father being her coach, and her mother being the manager of the athlete's team. It was also her family, more specifically her aunt, that gifted her her first pair of skis for Gut's first birthday, which she used to wear in the garden during summer. Since then, Gut loves skiing and her father is always at her side. When Gut competed in her first fist race, the Swiss ski team was in a bad shape. The team didn't win a single medal at the 2005 World Championships in Bormio, the first time since 1966, and they also haven't won a World Cup race since January 2004. So when the young Swiss, who always had a smile on her face, won a silver medal at the 2007 Junior World Championships, and finished second in the overall downhill ranking of the Europa Cup, the first talks of her being the talent of the century began. In the 2007 and 2008 season, Gut, only 16 years old at the time, made her World Cup debut at the Giant Slalom event in Lienz, but didn't qualify for the second run. In the same winter, she also debuted in the downhill event. On February 2nd, 2008, Gut stood in the start gate of the St. Moritz downhill with the bib number 32. One minute into the race, the time was showing green with an advantage of 0.22 seconds on the Austrian Maria Holau. The upset of the century was about to happen when 100 meters before the finish line, with a speed of 110 km per hour, Gut lost control of her left ski and crashed. Time stood still as the Swiss rookie slid down the slope on her back and across the finish line. The clock stopped counting and it showed plus 0.01 seconds. Incredible. Despite her crash, Gut is second in her first World Cup race ever with only one hundredth of a second behind first. In the end, Gut would place third because, with the bib number 47, a different future ski star reached the top of the podium. Tina Masi, the Slovenian who would become the skier with the most World Cup points in one season, won her first World Cup downhill race on that day. By the summer of 2015, Lara Gut had come back from a season-ending hip injury, won 12 World Cup races, three silver and a bronze medal at World Championships and an Olympic bronze medal at the 2014 Sochi Games. She also won the Super G title in the 2013-14 season. The only trophy missing was the one her best friend Anna Veit just won, the overall World Cup title. But Gut did not have to wait long for it. The 2015-16 season started out great for her. With a fourth place and a win in her weakest discipline, the giant slalom. Through the entire season, Gut would show great results, adding another five wins and four podiums to her record. Then, 
came the Alpine combined in Lenzerheide. Gut was first in the overall ranking, 295 points ahead of the German Victoria Ravensburg. After the slalom run, Gut was in ninth position and ready to attack in the Super G. In the end, she would place third behind teammate Wendy Holdener and the Austrian Michaela Kirchgasser. Because Ravensburg didn't compete in the combined, Gut could extend her lead to 355 points with only four races left in the season. But Ravensburg announced that she would not compete in the final slalom of the season, which made it impossible to take over the Swiss. And since the German was the only athlete that potentially still could have reached first place, Gut had secured the overall title four races before the end of the season. But for Lara Gut, this was not an achievement she dreamt of. For her, this just meant so much more pressure. Pressure that was on her since she was 17 years old and won her first World Cup race. That pressure would only become bigger with the upcoming World Championships in St. Moritz, Switzerland. Her 2017 season started off even better than the one before, with a win in Solden and four more before the World Championships. And then they were here, the World Championships at home, with all eyes on the current overall World Cup title holder. The expectations were high from the beginning, with the first race being Good's specialty, the Super G. The Swiss raced good, very good even. But in the end, it wasn't quite enough. She placed third behind Nicole Schmidhofer and Tina Weirater. But this was definitely not what Gut expected from herself. There still were opportunities for the gold medal though. The next would be the Alpine combined three days later. After the downhill, Gut was in third place. But then it happened. For many a big shock. And for her, the escape she needed. In the preparation for the combined slalom, Gut tore her ACL, which not only ended her World Championships, but also her World Cup season. But she wasn't angry, she wasn't sad or disappointed. She simply was relieved. All that pressure, all those expectations were gone. No one wanted her to win a race, no one was asking about results. After nine years in the spotlight, the athlete could finally just focus on herself. During the time Gut was injured, she moved out from her parents' house because she felt like she was working 24-7, seeing that her parents were both part of her team. And all their lives revolved around ski racing. It was also during this time that Gut and the Swiss football player Valon Berami grew closer. These two changes were very important for her. It gave Gut the opportunity to have a life outside of skiing and with that the needed balance she was looking for for so many years. The comeback after an ACL injury is always difficult and the chances for another injury are extremely high. Considering this, Gut's comeback was pretty successful. Of course, she couldn't attach to the great results from the prior two seasons, but with two second and five top 10 places in the first 12 races, she showed that she was ready to attack again. Her first win after the injury came on January 21st, 2018 in Cortina, but it would be her last top three results in the season and her last win for over two years. In the summer of 2018, Lara Gut and Valon Berami got married in a small private ceremony. Both athletes also deleted their social media profiles. One reason for this were the hate comments and messages the two received after the Swiss national football team played to a draw against Brazil at the 2018 World Championships. The next season would be one of Lara Gut Berami's most disappointing in her career. With only two top three results and not a single win, many speculated that her time was over. But on February 21st, 2020, in Kramontana, Gut Berami won the downhill ahead of team member Corin Sutter. And the two doubled up the next day in the second downhill event. 
Good Barami showed that she was back in the game and shot up the critics. And in this season, the Swiss showed once again that nobody should write her off just yet. With four World Cup Super G wins in a row and three more podiums in Giant Slalom, Parallel Giant Slalom and Downhill, Gut Barami went into the World Championships in Cortina as one of the favorites for a gold medal. And this time, everything worked out. Finally, Gut Barami won the Super G ahead of Corin Sutter, starting off the World Championships perfectly for the Swiss team. In the downhill, she placed third behind Corin Sutter and Kira Weidle. And then, four days later, Gut Barami surprised everyone, not the least herself, when she became the giant slalom world champion, just 0.02 seconds ahead of Michaela Schifrin. In the World Cup, the Swiss is currently leading the Super G ranking and is placed second in the overall ranking, constantly coming closer to leader Petra Wilhova. Until now, we have talked about the early success, the career low and the return to the top. But what we haven't mentioned are the controversies. So let's talk about them now. When Laura Gut joined the World Cup, her father founded his own ski team named Team Gut that only had his daughter as an athlete. The team had private coaches, equipment personnel and physiotherapists. While the Swiss ski team tolerated Lara Gut training separately, they weren't really happy about it. Over the years, the team became more and more professional and bigger. By 2009, it included its own PR team to promote Gut as a brand, and it cost about $600,000 per year to run. The costs were covered by sponsors, which led to a conflict of interest. Because when Gut was competing, she was required to wear the apparel from Swiss Ski and was not allowed to wear anything showing her private sponsors. Gut didn't listen to these rules and she defied the dress code by wearing a hoodie underneath the official Swiss Ski outfit and let the hood with the logo of a personal sponsor slip out. At the same time, her personal coach and longtime family friend Mauro Pini left her team to become the men's head coach at Swiss Ski. Gut was not happy about this at all, and she spoke out against Pini in an interview with an Italian newspaper. The two incidents together with alleged disrespect against the Swiss Ski director led the organization to suspend Gut for two races. The rare suspension of an athlete in ski racing garnered a lot of media attention and the entire conflict became public. Lara Gut threatened to open a case at the Court of Arbitration for Sports to change the clothing regulations of Swiss ski. But after intensive talks behind closed doors, the two parties managed to find a solution out of court. Lara Gut Berami and Swiss ski would never become friends though. While she trains with the team's athletes between races, she still has her own team and coaches. And from time to time, some conflicts between the organization and the athlete arise and become public. Just this season, Gut Barami complained about the course conditions in Gramontana, calling them terrible and disgusting. This, of course, was not received well by the race organizers and Swiss Ski, who demanded an apology from the athlete. The public didn't know about the last part of this conflict until cameras at the waiting area for the World Championship Super G in Cortina accidentally caught Gut Barami talking to a teammate about the issue. Und das haben sie genommen. Persönlich, es soll mich noch entschuldigen und es soll noch dem Präsident auch noch sagen, dass ich sie das jetzt bist du gut, dann legt mich am Arsch, dass ich noch zum Präsident komme. This of course made the rounds again in Swiss news outlets but there were no consequences for Gut Barami's statements. The three medals she won in Cortina definitely didn't hurt in this case. There is no denying that Gut Barami is one of the top five female skiers of the 21st century. With 30 World Cup wins, seven World Championship medals, one Olympic medal and much more to come, she is one of the greatest. But at the same time, we can also not deny that she's not the easiest person to work with. I personally like her because she's herself and doesn't try to hide her personality behind a veil of niceties. But this doesn't mean at all that she isn't nice. 
there is a lot of proof that she is a funny and kind-hearted person. But if she isn't happy about something, she won't keep quiet about it. In the end, I think that even if you don't like her as a person, you can still enjoy her great skiing and be impressed by her achievements. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to leave a like if you did, because it does help us understand what type of videos you guys like and what we should do more of in the future. And if you do want to see more videos in the future, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications to keep up with all of our latest content.